going home. Okay, George, going to look at your putting stroke first, and we're going to compare it to Tiger Woods. Your setup looks pretty similar. Uh, the width of your stance is about right. I like the fact that your elbows are slightly bent and tucked into your sides. That's really good. Uh, as, as Tiger takes the stroke back, his stroke ends right here. Then as he comes through, as he hits the ball, his eyes are down. Then as he continues through, his eyes stay down. He hasn't turned his head yet. His putter comes to a complete stop to right here. And then after his putter comes to a complete stop, he'll hold it for a moment or two. He'll hold his posture, his spine angle, his finish. He'll hold still for a moment or two. And then he will turn to watch the ball roll to the hole. But while he's watching the ball, he's still in his posture. He's still tilted over. He still holds his putter in, his, in its final finishing position. During that moment of holding, before he turns, that's when his subconscious mind will do a quick capture of the memory of the force used. So now when he looks at the, the result of the putt, he's able to subconsciously match the result to a experience of force. So in the future, when he sees something of similar need, similar distance, he's going to do a better job of guessing how hard to hit it because he is doing a better job of building this sensory library. So that's an, it's a very important fundamental. Now let's look at your stroke as you take it back. The end of your stroke is about here. As you come through and hit the ball, your eyes are down. But as the ball goes away, you, you immediately start turning and looking. Your putter uh, follow through into about right here, but you're, you're not really holding. And you'll notice that your putter recoils back as you look and, and you're coming out of your posture a little bit. And then your, your putter kind of coiled back a little bit. So those were the, the techniques that you had that I wanted to give you a more formal structure to your putting stroke. You had mentioned that you three putt maybe on average of six times a round, which is one time every three holes. And uh, we want to make tremendous progress. That's like hitting, having six penalty balls in a round. That's like hitting six drives in the water. Every time you three putt, you need to think of that as a lost stroke, the same way hitting it in the water is a lost stroke. So reducing your, your mistakes that you make in putting has to be one of our primary goals to help you lower your score. The, the only reason I teach is to help my students lower their score. One of the reasons that you three putt is you're going to be making too many mistakes with speed control, how hard to hit the ball. You're going to look at a long putt and you're going to guess how hard to hit it, but you're not going to guess as well as you would if you improved your, your technique. So um, we want to guess better and then we want to execute better. Now you also miss quite a few short putts. Tiger's follow through is longer than his backswing. You We've all heard that you want to accelerate through a stroke. And if we're accelerating through the stroke, through the ball, then one would uh, reasonably assume that the follow-through might be a little bit longer than the backswing. And Because uh, we don't really accelerate in our backswing, but we do accelerate in our forward swing. So the backswing is going to be a little bit slower and smoother and stop shorter and then we're going to accelerate through. And it's certainly true on this one putt of Tiger. Now, there will be examples of other kinds of putting greens and distances that you might see a little bit different shape.
but as a general rule, your follow-through should be slightly longer than your backswing. But in your case, your backswing was actually a little bit longer than your follow-through was. You went all the way to here, well past your back foot, and it stopped here, a little bit shorter. So your follow-through is a little bit shorter than your backswing, and that can cause some issues. And you particularly had some problems with short putts, in that you tended to stop the, the putter right at the ball. You kind of tried to just tap it into the hole instead of swinging through the ball and letting your, your putter head swing towards the hole and go through that ball. And we worked a little bit on that. I, don't, I didn't get video of that. But you have a, a consistent pattern of having short follow-throughs compared to your backswing. And it's going to affect not only your long putts, but your short putts. If you have a, a six-inch backswing for a short putt, but then you stop it only one or two inches after the ball, that ball may not get to the hole. So you want to have a short, long stroke, short, long, whether it's a 30-foot putt or a 30-inch putt. Short, long, short, long. And we'll work on that uh, some more. But All right, now, we worked on the putt, hold, and look um, after the initial session. And your eyes are down when you hit the putt. You've kept your eyes down. And you're not turning your head and you're swinging through. For a longer time so you're not turning early that's very good very consistent just in the wrong direction we're going to fix that today okay. that'll no longer be an issue okay george we're going to look at your driver swing uh, before i made any changes I've drawn two red arrows indicating the sticks that were on the ground out in front of you. We're, we were wanting to start the ball between those sticks so that it went in the direction between those two red lines. So as you go back, then as you hit the ball, that ball goes to the right. And this here is a second drive. And it also was to the right. We made basically one change in your setup. Didn't change your swing at all. Uh, on the left was your old ball position where you teed it up a little bit lower than I'd like and certainly much further back to the right. We move that ball much more forward. Uh, the setup on the right is your new setup. And that's the only change we made. And it allowed the club face more time to square up. That it was arriving at the, the ball too soon. The club face wasn't ready to hit it. It was too open at that moment back there. When you move it more forward, that club was given a little bit more time to come around and be aiming in the direction you wanted it to be aiming. And that's really the only change we made. Now we're going to look at your direction after we made the change of moving the ball more forward in your stance. Right down the, between the lines. Very good. This here's the second drive. Slightly right, but still between the sticks. Very good. This is a third tee shot, third, a third one in a row. Very solid, very straight, very good. This is your fourth swing in a row. Very straight. Lift the normal. 
Is that pretty straight? Yeah. It's better than he normally is. Right. He could never do this without teeing it higher. The tee he had was didn't allow him to tee it high enough. That's the best drive you've had in a long time, John. Yeah. Really? Come on. It can't be that simple. It can't be that simple. You've got a good golf swing. You hit all of those really solid. They all went in the exact same direction. They were just to the right. You developed a good swing to hit a consistently solid shot. But you don't have an athletic problem. You have a geometry problem. That's exactly right. That's what I want to hear. And that goes right between the sticks. Look at that. Oh. Playing good golf is not about controlling the ball. It's about controlling your attention. You have to make your attention discipline this new ball position. Right. If you, the, the ch it's no guarantee, but your chances are certainly better if you do this. Right. That may be the worst shot to the right, but that's playable, that's findable. Oh yeah. So we're, we're going more to the left and, and higher. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. That's a little power fade. Does that feel better? Yeah. It really does. Good. I would recommend doing this for a while until you get comfortable with looking at visual. I want you to get your grip. I want you to put your feet together. I want you to feel like if you drew, drew a, a right angle from the tip of your toe to the ball and then a right angle, to, does that line go to your where you want to start the ball? Yeah, that's where I want to start the ball. So do that with your feet together and then only step away with your left, right foot. I want you to have absolute confirmation that it's correct. Okay, I'm, I feel like this line is at right angles to my target line. That means it's off my left toe. I'm, only, I'm stepping away and I'm set up. I'm ready to go. Left toe on the ball, step away with the right foot. It's on your left, okay. then just step away with the right. Now it's off your left side. Very nice. Center field. That's the one you want to hit. That's the best one you hit today. And it may sneak off a little to the right of that. You know, some of these balls are even trying to have a little draw curve on them. That's a beautiful ball. 